You know sometimes when you read a book or watch a movie and something gets revealed that changes the way you see the whole thing. It, it's, it's exciting. You're able to see the big picture. I will always remember when I was a little boy and I watched the second episode of Star Wars. Near the end of the movie, the evil character, Darth Vader, says this, Luke, I am your father. The first time I heard this, I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. And everything changed. I wanted immediately to watch the movie again, watch the movie before, and I was thrilled and excited about what will come next. It's the same when we read the Bible, especially when it comes to understand old books of the Old Testament, like the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 22, Abraham is called to sacrifice his only son for God. You read this story and it doesn't make sense until, until almost 2,000 years later when Jesus appears and being sacrificed in the same way for us. Jesus coming in this world changed the whole story. The Apostle Paul he, he's telling people that before Jesus, before we understood who Jesus was all about, uh, we couldn't understand and appreciate fully the Old Testament. It's It was like covered like a veil on your face. But after believing in Jesus, after uh, repenting and understanding who he was, that veil was removed. And he was so excited about looking back in the Old Testament and understanding and putting everything in perspective of God sending Jesus in this world. And Jesus being uh shadowed like all over the, the scripture in the Old Testament. And we should be excited also what happened next uh, after the coming of Jesus, not reading the, the New Testament, but also being aware that God is continuing to write the story and we are part of this story. Finding ways to see our invisible God is essential for a faithful life. Seeing is a major theme in Abraham's life and, to be honest, in, in our own lives as well. Let me give you some example. Genesis 12, God's saying to Abraham, Go from your country to the land I will show you. And a little bit later in the same chapter, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. A little bit later, chapter 15, he took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you indeed can count them. I could go on and on. If you read Genesis 12 to 22, you'll see that theme of vision is all over the place. There's so many quotes about vision that I love and appreciate so much. Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Indeed, vision is an art, but not only a, a, an art, but also a, a true blessing when someone is able to see what is invisible, like Abram was able to accomplish. It, it's absolutely outstanding. Where there is no vision, there is no hope. So true. When, when we lose our spiritual sight, when we lose uh, our pr spiritual perspective of the future, this, this vision, uh, we, we can fall into despair, discouragement, and lose all hope very quickly. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. You would agree with me. All these quotes are uh, very convicting and, and so true. You know, some may not understand or fully appreciate why Abraham is our father uh, in the faith, the father of faith. I hear these questions all the time, even among people in the church. When they come time to reflect on, on Abram's life, saying things like, but but he believed, he struggled in believing in God at time. Um, um, or um, I, I, he lied, 
he deceived the king in regards of Sarah, his wife, pretending that he was his sister just to save his life. Or uh, he didn't trust God and agreed to have a child with his wife's servant. You know, when we look at these things, how can we say that Abraham is uh, the father of faith? What what do you answer to, to this? Um, I, I think one thing, one thing I, I love so much about the Bible is the fact that the Bible is honest. Clearly, when I read the Bible, when I read these books in the Old Testament, I can see that it's not uh, makeup by men because it's just showing humanity as we really are. Um, and the Bible is reminding us that no one is perfect. No one. And even including uh, Abraham. But his faith. His faith was exceptional because he was able to see and believe the invisible and he was able to believe in the impossible. That what made uh, Abraham's faith so exceptional. I think also through Abraham, God shows his power by using broken and imperfect people. I don't know for you, but... That brings me hope for myself. There's so many stories that move me as I read uh, this part of scripture in Genesis, but Genesis 15, particularly the, the first uh, six verses of chapter 15 are very, very moving. I really want to encourage you to, to go watch the thread podcast of this week. David and uh, Hannah did a great job at explaining the concept of covenant and, and cover that part of, of Genesis chapter 15. Why I loved it so much? Because you see Abraham struggling in his faith, struggling and believing in God. And, and God noticed this. Actually, God initiates with, with Abraham kind of coming to him and like, what's up? What's happening? He looked down and, and Abraham started to complain to God. And after his first complaint, there's silence, like God doesn't respond. And Abraham continued to complain to God even more. What amazed me after this, when finally God speak up, he didn't rebuke Abraham. Instead, he reminds him about the promises he made. He asked him to go outside to look up on this, look up in the sky. And and he showed him all the stars. He's calling him, look at all the, the, the stars. Uh, and that's it. That's pretty much it. God didn't show any more evidences. He, he just uh, reminded about his initial promise that he made. And we read that Abraham believed. Abraham overcame his struggle, overcame his doubt to Believe And as we read in verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord and credited to him as righteousness. That's a stunning statement um, that is showing us that we can't be perfectly righteous in our actions. Not even Abraham was perfect. But we see here Abraham standing under a billion stars, decided to see things God's way, even though it was nearly impossible, he made the decision to see things God's way. He didn't do anything much. He just changed the way he saw a situation to agree with the way that God saw the situation. He and God started seeing eye to eye. And I think it's the same for us at times. We may be going through some times of doubts, of discouragement. We just need to make the decision to believe. And as we learn here, seeing God makes us righteous. Seeing God with an obedient faith, makes us righteous. Let's move on to Genesis 22 here. 
and understanding the Lord will provide. Last week, we looked at uh, three of the four altars that Abraham built, and we, re we will reveal the fourth today. The final altar is the most challenging. It was the most challenging for Abraham because all the promises that he believed before this final altar would be the ultimate challenge of his trust in God. And as we'll see, this altar is even the most challenging for God too. Let's start reading Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom who you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Did you know that this mountain, Moriah, many centuries later, will become the place where King Solomon will build the great temple? Like, you think about the promises of, of God like that Abraham couldn't uh, see in his lifetime coming uh, to fruition later in, in the, the future. For me, that's amazing. And it happened on the same mountain that God is calling uh, to sacrifice his own son. Let's keep reading in verse 6. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. This is so moving when you read this story and you can make the connection with the, the New Testament, right? You see the, the son uh, carrying the wood that was placed on his son. What a, an obvious shadow of what Jesus would do carrying the cross uh, to uh, his place of um, crucifixion. And, and it's so moving when, when the young Isaac is turning to his father Abraham and asking him, where's the lamb? It, it's heartbreaking when you read this story. Can you imagine being the father and, and hearing from your precious and only son, where is the lamb? Perhaps this is what Jesus had to go through in his relationship with his own father. And, and the response of Abraham is remarkable. God himself will provide. What a stunning statement. What a faith, unbreakable uh, conviction, a deep trust in God that God will provide. You see how much Abraham evolved uh, compared to the beginning of his um, encounter with God in, in the first years as he uh, followed God. You can read the story, you know the story between verse 9 to 13, arriving on the top of the mountain, building the altar. Abraham was ready with the knife to sacrifice his son. And uh, a, an unexpected miracle, divine intervention, a, an angel came and, and stopped Abraham to do this, uh, acknowledging that Abraham really uh, feared God, believed in God, and um, Abram was able to find a ram that was sacrificed instead of his son. And he declared in verse 14, so Abram called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, they, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Amen. This is so cool, guys. 
there is a, another way of uh, saying someone will provide. We say they will see it through. They will see it through. This is actually reflected in the word uh, provide or provision. Provision. Provision as the uh, vision as the, the root. I'm not going to take too much time to explain this, but th this is really, really cool. This worship proclamation of Abraham could be translated this way. Abraham called the name of that place. God sees it through. As it says today on God's mountain, God sees it through. Let's wrap up here this morning. If we stay on this mountain, but look beyond this amazing moment between a father and a son of the promise, we can see even more clearly that God provides and never fails to see it through. As I mentioned before, this same mountain, Moriah, where the, where the Lord provided a new sacrifice to fulfill his promise to Abraham would become the site of the temple in Jerusalem where so many sacrifices would be made by Abraham's descendants. You can read this in 2 Chronicles chapter 3. This is amazing, but that's not all. Did you know it would also be the sight of this. Yes, yes, the same place where Jesus was crucified. Actually, the temple, uh, Caiaphas' house, the high priest, but also the judgment seat of Pilate, the praetorium, the palace of Roman governor, and Golgotha, we're all located up and around this same mountain of Moriah. I don't know for you, but I think this is amazing. The Lord will provide. He will see through. It reminds me of a scripture, and I will end with this today in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we close, I would say this. Sometimes we may feel like we don't measure up or we're stuck or there are major challenges that we're facing in our life. Let's be encouraged and strive to see that God will see it through. Just believe and trust as our brother Abraham did. Mm -hmm.